Can you say more about the, the Dharma protectors? Clarify oh. who they are, how they appear. That's a big topic. We need a whole, like, <laughs> that's a huge topic. Of course, it's part of our refuge tree, the Dharma protectors, and um, they are different classes of beings that um, have taken oaths to protect the doctrine and to support practitioners. They're a very big part of our lineages in Tibetan Buddhism. Um, and a very important part of our practice and so therefore there are special practices that we do for them um, but there's many 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 kinds of protectors there's the worldly protectors and there's the wisdom protectors they're first and second guests you know from if you're familiar with the four guests set up but they're a big part of our practice and as you go more deeply into the practices, you are given these little offering practices to do for them. And they have taken vows to support you. So it's the Dharma protectors that will help provide the conducive circumstances that literally will help, you know, gather all the meeting the right person at the right time being at the right time at the right place removing obstacles so that you can go pursue that retreat you want to do or you can go to that teaching you want to go to and you need the money and the money just comes like this is all the dharma protectors activity and they are very active and lamas always have dharma protectors that are part of their retinues that they're very close to you know as you go deeper into the practice and as you become a lineage holder you get special empowerments called the soktik that binds you to the protector and the protector then becomes your retinue so when you are studying with a lama you are under the protection of that lama's protectors very much so and um and so and as long as you're keeping samaya and as long as you're doing your practice they have to um, support you in many ways and they also support the lineage and they also support the teachings the flourishing of the teachings and they also um, uh, you know they they remove obstacles right so they're a very important part of our our tradition in the conversation earlier you mentioned that the drikung lamas were less likely to talk about this stuff um, compared with Lama yeah. Dawa, even the even about the spirits, the nature spirits, the land spirits, uh, why do you think there were these different approaches? Well, I I was told um, one possible thing is because Tibetans believe if you say the name, you invoke it, right? So they're very reluctant to just blab about these protectors and call them by name because then you would invoke them. So I think that's one reason. But also it's the Nakbas are really working with these energies all the time, you know. And so, and not, not that the monastic tradition doesn't, of course. There's Dharma protector sulkas in, in every tzolk you do. There's always these Dharma protectors. But I just think that the Nakbas are very comfortable. Work. They're not afraid of the repercussions. They're very comfortable with it. You know, and my, some of it might have been cultural, too, that we Westerners, you know, it's a little bit con can be controversial. We don't really understand what they are. And some of it may be a cultural thing. Why do you think that, um, you know, the practices that Lama Dara Rinpoche grew up with uh, for the spirits in like Dolpo or why do you think when you come to America that this same technology works or does it have to be adjusted a little, little bit? Why do I think the same technology works? So the different spirits here then. Yeah, but actually um, they're not that associated with a particular place and time. These uh, beings don't have physical form. They are not tangible. And so our relative space and time is not their dimension. Right, they they can be anywhere. So mm -hmm. just because a protector might be a Tibetan protect, protector, oh no, they're with you. Like, like I was telling the story, I was having recurring dreams as a child, 
and I was I was always having these dreams of the shining man on a red horse. Yeah. And um, I just called him my guardian angel. I didn't know what to call him, but I later found out it was Taglungenyan, the protector of the Taglungkagyu, was with me my whole life. I didn't know who it he was. But here I, you know, here I was a Tibetan, I was killed, and now I'm an American lady, but he's yeah. with me, you know, yeah. and so, and I really feel that, you know, Westerners who are very interested in the Dharma, who have strong karmic background, you all have protectors, I'm sure you do, and they will show up in your dreams. The different protectors have different qualities, you know, and the case of the Taglungenians, a Tsen spirit, for example, and they're depicted as these kind of Mongol warriors on horses, you know, with their Mongol hat. And in my dream, here I am, this American girl who doesn't know anything about this, but he appeared to me as like a warrior. I called him the shining man on a red horse. He didn't necessarily have a Mongol hat, but there was something very warrior-like, and it was intimidating, I, you know, He's in the distance always watching me. I knew he wasn't threatening, but I was intimidated. So there was that quality of a kind of warrior. Whereas yakshas are a kind of dharma protector. They're kind of nasty little grumpy dwarfs. I mean, really, they're <laughs> very grumpy. <laughs> and, um, and nagas, on the other hand, nagas will come in your dreams as a lover. You know, that, that mysterious partner that you just have this, like, incredible, close, sensual encounter with, and you wake up from that dream like, who is that? Mm. You know, these are the Nagas will come. So, you know, it's very likely that you all have protectors, and they will show up in your dreams. They're with you. You know, they know where you are. They live very long lives. Human beings have short, 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 short lives. They have very long lives. And so you die and take another body somewhere else, and they, they know where you are. So they're not really bound by place so much. Mm. And there are protectors in the United States. You know, Karmapa subjugated a yellow yaksha in Woodstock. There's a yeah. little dharma, there's a little prayer they do for this yellow yaksha when they were first building the monastery. And Lama Dawa also, um, when we were first buying the land in Iowa, he had the visions of the Nagini of the Mississippi River, and he wrote a prayer that we do for her. So there are now protectors. In Mexico, same thing. He, you know, the Popocatapetl, the volcanic mountain, the protector of that mountain came to him. And they, the Mexican Sangha, have to do this um, offering and practice for him. So there are now recognized protectors in our continent and also do you remember in france i understand yes. he wrote some for the french people so and on your retreat lands do you connect with the spirits there and have have the protectors there so you do all these yeah. practices I, I imagine yeah oh yeah nice <laughs> okay thank you that was that was perfect thank you so much